Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Sylvester Church and our Mass celebration for the first Sunday of Lent. We extend a warm welcome to visitors and new parishioners. Please stop by our welcome station in the vestibule to learn more about our parish, to pick up a welcome booklet and registration form. Please take this moment to make sure your phone is off or on silent mode. The readings can be found on page 73 in the Breaking Bread Book. Once again, that is page 73. The words to the psalm are, Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Please sing this psalm after me. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Thank you. If you'd like to have your book ready, our opening song can be found on page 136, Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days. Before we begin our celebration, we would like to invite all children ages 4 to 6 to come forward and to celebrate in the liturgy of the word specifically suited to their needs. Please look for your children when they return after the prayer of the faithful. Please rise and join in singing our opening hymn, number 136, Lord Who Throughout These Forty Days, 136. Good morning. Good morning, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. 
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty Father, through the yearly observance of Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Right. 
right is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient. While God patiently waited in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So yesterday I had uh, first confession uh, for... 40 boys and girls from our parish and I smile because I was tired after it but I smile because you know one of my friends who's a priest he he really sums it up so beautifully he says hearing first confessions of little kids is like being stoned with popcorn (laughs) and it's true it's true and you know um, when they come in of course Going for your first confession, you understand this as I understand it, it's, it's almost like going to the doctor's office for a shot. 
you know you have to have it and you want it over as quickly as possible. And so I try to take their mind off the pain and, and they're scared as hell of course. So I try to get them to smile and to feel good and happy and to believe and to feel that God loves them. That's, that's the whole goal of First Confessions. And you know, one little guy came in and he sat down and, he, sh and he, he shook my hand and I said, wow, this a little guy, he, you have a grip. Wow, I thought I was shaking the hand of a big muscular guy. I said, you got a grip. And I usually look at something on their t-shirts or their shoes or whatever. They all have interesting stuff they wear. And so I, I make a big deal of that just to get their mind off the what's going on. And I said to him, I said, what's, what's on your, what's on your t-shirt? And he said, I'm in martial arts, Father. And I said, oh, I better go easy on you. <laughs> and then he looked at me, and he was really serious. He said, well, Father, don't worry, I won't hurt you. <laughs> so, so I said, all right. But before, before we started with the confessions, we, we all gather up here, sit down up here. It's great fun. And they broke them up into groups. And so I said, uh, how many of you are apostles? And about 10 raised their hands. I said, how many of you are disciples? A few more raised their hands. I said, how many of you are saints? Some others raised their hands. Then I, I said, and they had their name tags, you know. I, and I said, how many of you are angels? And there were a few raised their hands. Then I looked at them and I said, well, now I've got to ask you a really important question. How many of you are sinners? And you know, they were a little reluctant, but not, not too reluctant. And all of a sudden they said, well, Father, we're all sinners. We're all sinners. I said, the kids tell the truth, right? We're all sinners. And maybe that's what we did on Ash Wednesday a few days ago. Whether we realize it or not, we didn't come for a blessing on our foreheads. We came to say, hey, we're all sinners. We got a long way to go. We're, we're broken people. We're in need of God's mercy and help. And we need this Lenten season because on our journey to God, we have a lot that we need to work on, right? And so that's what Lent is about. We start out saying we're sinners and we want to get closer to God and we want to prepare for eternal life. But we begin, we're sinners. We need God's help. We need his mercy. We need his grace. Right? We're not play acting. We're telling the truth like the little kids did. We put the ashes on the forehead. We go out and we say, wow, you're a sinner, not a big sinner, a little sinner. I'm a sinner. That's it. So, you know, as we begin to land, quite honestly, there's a lot of pious piddle that they put out. A lot of stacks of Lenten reflections and prayers and readings. And I don't know about you, some of them just don't strike me. They don't ring my bell. They don't do a lot for, for me. Maybe they do for you. Everyone's different. But I, I thought I'd start with something I thought would be very practical, real, and meaningful. And uh, I found, first of all, this uh, Facebook documentary. And it's called Tom vs. Time. And it's about the quarterback of the New England Patriots, Tom Brady. Now, you might not like Tom Brady. I don't care. You may not like the New England Patriots. That's, that's not the point here. Set that aside. By anyone's uh, standards, certainly I think Tom Brady is a, is a great quarterback and a tremendous athlete. Win or lose, and he's won more than he's lost, he's just a great, disciplined, committed athlete. And you find out through the uh, documentary that his success is no accident. And so I, I found this article, which is a wonderful article. I put it in the bulletin. Everyone has one of these in their parish bulletin. Take this, read it, reflect upon it. It's interesting, it's real, it's captivating. It's a great way to begin the Lenten season. Now, I'm not going to read. I don't like to read during homilies. I'm just going to read one short paragraph. It begins 
the documentary, it's a monologue, and it's what Tom Brady says about himself, his life, his discipline, his goals. Just listen, and maybe this will be something we can dovetail with our Lenten observance. He says, what are you willing to do and what are you willing to give up to be the best you can be? You only have so much energy and the clock's ticking on all of us. And when you say yes to something, that means you've got to say no to something else. In the end, my life is focused around football. It always has been and always will be as long as I'm playing the game. I've given my body, my everything, every bit of energy for 18 years to it. So if you're going to compete against me, you better be willing to give up your life because I'm giving up mine. So, you know, honestly, it's maybe irreverent, but it's a reality that there is something that we call the religion of sports. Some people are so passionate and feverish about sports. It becomes a religion in and of itself. You know this, and maybe you worship at that altar. I don't know. But sports are a major thing. And, you know, we can turn it around maybe, and we can talk about the sport of religion. And that may seem just as irreverent to you, but look at St. Paul in the New Testament. St. Paul talks about the sport of religion. What does he say? He says, I've run the race, I've finished my course, I've crossed the finish line, now the crown of imperishable glory awaits me. He talks about our faith and discipleship, our living the gospel each day, our Christian life as a sport, that we ought to be serious and passionate about it. There is the finish line. There is the course, the race. There is given, giving the, the, the final measure. There is going the distance. This is what he's talking about, whether it be football or baseball, and he's really probably talking about the Olympics, and you're watching the Olympics now, I'm sure, and you see, wow, you slump back in your easy chair with your chips and your beer, and you say, wow, look at that athlete, like perfection, unbelievable. How did they do that? I was watching some of the, the uh, skiing last night, unbelievable. But they give their life, they give their everything, they give their bodies, they give their time, they sacrifice for this moment, for this opportunity, for this gold or silver or bronze performance. This is what Brady's talking about. This is what Paul is talking about. This is what we might call the sport of religion. And it's bringing some reality into something we see as very pious and nice and wonderful, but we need to approach it as, as strongly and as focused as we do something like sports. Now, in the Gospel today, Jesus is baptized. Very simple, very quick, right? You've got to pay attention to this. He's baptized. The Spirit sends him out into the desert like we're sent into Lent. And he's there, what? Tempted by Satan. Maybe you don't believe in Satan. Maybe that's not sophisticated enough for you. I know people that say, oh, that's just a story. We don't believe in Satan. We don't believe in the devil. There's other explanations for that now. We're smart people. If you don't believe in Satan, look up Parkland, Florida. Look up Parkland, Florida. Because Satan came to Parkland this past week, and he didn't come from Russia, and he didn't come from North Korea. He didn't come with horns and a tail and something f so frightening. He came looking like the boy next door, the boy who lives next door to you. He came with an innocent face. 
to kill all those young people. If you don't believe in Satan or evil or original sin, man, if this doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. And you know, the media is like a monkey chasing its tail. This circuitous type news which begins here and ends where, we, where you started, it gets you nowhere. It's reaction and emotion. And I was talking with Father Alvaro this week about this. We had a, a long conversation and we both came to the same conclusion. And it may be something that you may not hear anywhere else. And we came to this conclusion. My brothers and sisters, the people there are very angry, they're protesting, they're marching, they're crusading. They're, when you're angry, you're looking for something or someone to blame. You're looking for someone to come and solve your problem. And generally it's something or someone on the outside. But the truth of the matter is, there's a problem in that community. In that community, like any community, a problem in that community, a wound in that community because that young boy with the innocent face who killed all those young people in that school and teacher and coach he grew up in that community he lived in that community went to school in that community had friends in that community people knew him he didn't hatch on another, on another planet and get deposited in that community. He came from that community. There's something in that community. And we said, we hope they go deeper. But, you know, the, all signs so far as they're not. People crusading and marching around generally aren't going deeper. You know, the government, the FBI, the president, all the, they're not going to solve this. There's no solution there on the outside. You know, I saw a sign, several signs, in a crowd on the news. What, 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 there were some women carrying signs. Says, we don't need prayer. We don't need prayer. You don't need prayer. What do you need? What do you need if you don't have prayer? What do you need if you don't have God? That's the problem. The devil has to be doing a dance. They're walking around with signs saying, prayer, we don't need that. We don't need God. We don't need thoughts. We don't need that kind of support. You know, it made me think, some of you who are older will remember this. Remember Father Patrick Payton? Huh? He's up for beatification, I think. Remember what he said. He said, the family that prays together stays together. Prayer is the most powerful thing in the world. When we give up prayer, we're lost. And that community is lost. Lost. That young man was lost. Now lives are lost. Families are lost. And what's going to happen, I'm going to tell you today, in that community, I know it. I've seen it after tragedies and crisis. You saw it after 9-11, which was a national crisis. People flood into the churches. In Parkland, there will be people all filling the churches. But they'll forget. They'll forget. Today they remember God because they have nowhere to go or no one else to turn to. They'll forget. They'll forget God. They won't make a commitment. I see this all the time. People whose faith and commitment is based on crisis, it just evaporates. They won't be there in the next few weeks. They'll go back to their usual, usual routine. They'll forget God. Right? They'll forget God. Again and again and again this happens. And you know, my brothers and sisters, the truth is, this is going to happen again. Pray God. It doesn't, but it will happen again and again and again because God is not part of the picture. That's the reality. And Jesus had to go into that desert, into that Lenten desert, to decide, is God going to be part of the picture of my life? Am I going to, am I going to do this with God or without God? Am I going with God or without God? Is it God's way or my way. And 
Fortunately, he decides, I'm going with God. I'm doing God's will. He came out of the desert announcing the gospel, the beginning of his ministry. But his whole life, from that moment until his crucifixion, tempted by Satan, constantly, constantly. And yet God was with him. And he was victorious, we might say. In the end, victorious. And you know, that's what we want to be. You know, Jesus is not concerned if in our faith journey, in living our baptism, we make mistakes. We fail, we fall, we sin, we're weak, we pick ourselves up. What he really disdains is mediocrity. Mediocrity. And my friends, the bar in most areas of life is set very, very, very low. You know, some of these troubled families, troubled kids, I've seen them through the years. They've set off alarm bells, red flags. I've been concerned about them. I've called the authorities to because it's my responsibility, not as simply as a priest, but as a fellow human being. And I said, look, you need to invest, look at this, investigate this. You know, this is a bomb waiting to go off. Never anything happens. Never. You know why? Because the bar is set so low for marriage and family life and parenting, the most important things in the world. The bar is set so low. If you don't light your kids on fire, you're okay. That's where we are. That's why no one said anything about that kid. Because, you know what? None of that was unusual on social media. None of it. None of it. Because there's no standard that's high enough. We need to raise the standard. And my brothers and sisters, we need to rise above mediocrity as human beings. And maybe Lent is the time. Here, now, today. The day of salvation, Paul says, now is the appropriate time. Be a better man. Be a better woman. Be a better Christian. Be the best Christian you can be. Be the best disciple you can be. Be the best Catholic that you can be. Don't, don't worry about other people noticing. Believe me. We'll all have a long way before people say, Wow, he's really on fire. He's a wonderful Catholic. She's, she's just a passionate Catholic. We've got a long way to get there. Because we have a boatload of nominal Catholics who live their lives in a very mediocre way. And you know what? We can throw a stone or shake the bushes and, and we'll, we'll find them. We don't need any more of those. We've got plenty. We need passionate, committed men and women who live their faith, who follow Christ, who witness as disciples, and who are the best Catholic Christians they can be. That's what we need. That's what's going to save our world and save our community and save our neighborhoods. That's what's going to help us to fight and combat the evil that's in our world. And you know, some commentator said it this past week, I don't remember who it was, but I said, hurrah. They said, you know, people have got to face the fact that there's evil in the world. Evil! And that human beings are capable of tremendous virtue, tremendous good, but they're also capable of perpetrating horror and pain and disaster on others. So we're the ones that have to rise up and live our faith in a committed and passionate way. And you know, I, I, as, I, as I say to you, really, I, I take this because I found this very meaningful and captivating, this article. There's so much more in it that I, I could bring out today. But there is a final question, and I think it's the most important question that we need to ask ourselves as we look at the sport of religion. 
If people are willing to do it for football, shouldn't we be willing to do it for eternal life? Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we begin our journey of Lent, we turn to our merciful and loving Father with all of our needs. That all baptized Christians faithfully proclaim the reign of God and turn to him in every temptation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That political leaders avoid temptations of power and greed and serve with sincere generosity those they represent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who face obstacles, be they physical or emotional, grow in faithful, faith-filled stamina and determination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are on their journey to the Easter sacraments experience the welcome and support of their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the members of this assembly in prayer and fasting be drawn ever more deeply into the Paschal mystery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military men, women, and their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of this parish, that we trust in Jesus' desire and power to cleanse our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own prayers we offer in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters, especially in the community of Parkland, Florida, especially those who died, their families, the young people, those who mourn, and those who seek healing and peace. That the Lord and those Christians and people of faith may reach out to them and bring healing and mercy and peace at this time. For this we pray to the Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, we thank you for being with us this morning and for hearing all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, number 117, Gracious God, number 117. In this time of 
sacred struggle in this time of sacrifice. We rejoice for we remember that you lead us into life. Gracious God, mercy is your name, redeeming love, you give your life away. Gracious God, we bless your holy name, receiving love, we give our lives away. Lord, we're thirsting for your grace. When consuming all but you, Lord, all we gain is emptiness. Gracious God, mercy is your name. Redeeming love, we give your life away. Bless your holy name, receiving love, we give our lives Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it, 
to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially, Father. We remember Joseph and Anna Toma, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, St. Sylvester, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, let us ask our Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity according to your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Please join in singing our communion hymn number 437 on eagle's wings, number 437.
Please turn to page 477. There's a wideness in God's mercy. Hold on. Excuse me. Please turn to page 499. Only this I want. 499.
Well, good morning to everyone once again, and a very special welcome to any new parishioners who may be with us for the first time. We're happy you're here, and we hope you feel at home here in your new parish. And visitors, vacationers, snowbirds, a very warm welcome to you. We're happy you're with us, and we hope you consider this always a part of your faith uh, life here when you're visiting. Come and worship with us at Mass. We're happy that you've joined us. Um, the um, Lenten schedule is in the parish bulletin, but just to run through it uh, very briefly, every Friday is Stations of the Cross at 6 p.m., and prior to the Stations of the Cross at 6 p.m., the Knights of Columbus offer us a fish fry at beginning at 4.30. It's supposed to be 5, but I say 4.30. You come at 4.30, they will feed you, I promise you. So 4.30 to 6, and then you're welcome to stay for the Stations of the Cross. Um, the Mass schedule during the week is the same, except we add on Wednesday evening an additional Mass at 6 p.m. So on Wednesday there are two Masses, 8.30 in the morning and 6 in the evening. Then on uh, Tuesdays, beginning this Tuesday, all through uh, Lent, inclusive of Holy Week, there's going to be a Lenten program at 6.30 p.m. Tuesdays, 6.30 p.m. after the 6 p.m. Mass, and uh, um, we have an opportunity to learn more about Lent, to deepen our understanding of, uh, uh, you know, of Lent. And Tom Lehman, who is uh, very well versed in theology, is going to be giving us that uh, program every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. after the 6 o'clock Mass in the uh, classroom building, I believe, Tom, in the, in the conference room downstairs so please come there's lots of room and I know Tom's been working very hard preparing this so I think it'll be a very very uh, good experience uh, beneficial experience for all of us um, also um, I, I, I should add that um, uh, the Catholic sharing appeal is going well this is the follow-up weekend you see we have just a little over one-third of our goal at just after one week so I'm very uh, heartened by that and hope that you'll continue to uh, step up to the plate and uh, make your pledge so we can wrap this thing up very shortly. We've always reached our goal and I hope that we'll reach and exceed it so that some perhaps can come back to our parish for our own use. So thank you for those who've made your pledge last week or made your pledge today and uh, we anticipate uh, many making their pledge in the next week so we can complete our, our, uh, uh, our campaign. Uh, also, um, the Knights of Columbus every year offer a scholarship, two scholarships, uh, called the Roger Gallen Scholarship. Roger was a beloved uh, parishioner, active member of the Knights, and he died rather uh, you know, suddenly and tragically a few years ago. So it's named after, in memory of him, and it's to help uh, two young people who would like to go to Pensacola Catholic High School. Each scholarship is $600. And, you know, someone said to me, well, that's just like one month or something. It costs like a five or 6000 you know, um, per year. Well, so that's still one month. Lord in heaven, who is it? Uh, Madam Pelosi said we're getting crumbs or something, right? $1,000 is crumbs. Well, maybe... Maybe we think $600 is crumbs. I don't know about you. I think 600 is pretty good. So there are two right there to be had by students who would like to go to Catholic uh, high school in Pensacola, and the Knights are willing to give those out. There's a, there's a uh, registration form right in the bulletin. just have to fill it out. And, uh, they're more than happy to offer those. And, uh, you know, I think for parents, oh, my God, $600 is 600 If it's 10% if it's, uh, of the of the tuition. Well, that's still 10%. I think that, you know, that would help a great deal, right? So think about that. It's a great opportunity. Uh, also, once again, I'm extending an invitation to the high school and even middle school uh, and even college age uh, young uh, people in our parish like to go on the retreat to St. Leo's Abbey. Uh, with, uh, with, with I'm going along with uh, several of our youth ministers 
beginning March 2nd, Friday, and returning on uh, March uh, 4th on Sunday. If you'd like to go, it's $100, but don't let that put you off. If that's a problem, you just tell me and we'll get it covered. I'll go to the Knights of Columbus. They've got a lot of money I'm sure they want to give away. <laughs> so, especially after their fish fries right now. But we, we'll, we'll help you. Don't worry. Don't let that stop you. So, I hope more uh, young people accept my personal invitation to go on this. It's a wonderful retreat. I've been on it before. You'll, you'll have an experience that you probably never, ever had in your life. So I hope that you will consider going. It's only from uh, Friday, and you get a day out of school. How, how, how great is that, right? You get Friday out of school, and you come back on, uh, on uh, Sunday, Sunday evening. So please uh, let me know or let Eileen, our um, youth uh, director, know, and we'll be happy to, to sign you up. Today, uh, unfortunately, there are no donuts and coffee because it's a holiday weekend. You know, it's President's Day weekend. And uh, so I, I hope that uh, uh, you'll come back next weekend and enjoy them after Mass next weekend. So we want to give everyone who does the donuts and coffee a break. So, so we hope that uh, you enjoy the, if you have the day off tomorrow, I know the kids do. I know they're looking forward to a, a Monday holiday, but uh, we wish you a, a good day off tomorrow and, and we'll have coffee and donuts back next week. Think of that. What I said uh, a little while ago during the homily, if, in case you've already forgotten the homily, I think I've forgotten it, but um, uh, the family that prays together stays together. What's Pope Francis talking about now? Watch what he's talking. He's talking about the family. He's talking about the family as the most essential unit in our society, in our world. And if that breaks down, you know, we're in serious trouble. So he's really trying to encourage and support and bring healing and, and strength to the, to the family. Your family is everything. You know, bring your family to God. Pray as a family. That's the only thing that will save the family. Prayer, prayer, not legislation. Prayer, prayer will save the family. So please, Make time during Lent to pray with your family, whether it's a short prayer uh, during dinner or after dinner, maybe saying the rosary, whatever. Pray with your family. You know, Father Peyton was right. Prayer is a powerful thing, and it can save the family. The family that prays together stays together. It's, so please think about that and pray with your family. So. Let us pray. And by the way, uh, uh, the religious store, even though there's nothing in the Paris Center, the religious store, religious article store is open today. So if you'd like to go over there, please feel free to go over and see what they have. If you'd like to purchase something, it is open right now. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished hope increased and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and to strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. As we go forth, please join in singing number 477, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, number 477. Which is more than liberty